In this presentation, we're going to learn how to graph trig functions without having to kind of graph point by point. Um, and, and hopefully, after this presentation, you can also look at a trig function and be able to figure out um, the, the actual analytic definition of the function as well. So let's start, let's say f of x. Let me make sure my, I'm using all the right tools. So let's say that f of x is equal to, let's say it equals 2 sine of, let's say, 1 half x. So when we look at this, a couple of interesting things here. How is this different than just a regular sine function? Well, here we have 2. We multiplying two, the whole function by 2. And also, the coefficient on the x term is 1 half. And if, if you've seen some of the videos I've made, uh, you'll know that this term affects the amplitude, and this term affects the, uh, the period or the inverse of the period, which is the frequency. Either way, it depends whether you talk about um, one, or, one or the inverse of the other one. So let's start with the amplitude. This 2 tells us that the amplitude of this function is going to be 2. Uh, because if, if it was just a 1 there, the amplitude would be 1. So it's going to be 2 times that. So let's, let's draw a little dotted line up here uh, at y equals, it's supposed to be y equals 2. And then another dotted line at y equals negative 2. y equals negative 2. And now we have to figure out, so we know this is the amplitude. We know that the function is going to somehow oscillate between these two points. But we have to figure out how fast is it going to oscillate between the two points, or what's its period. And I'll give you a little formula here that um, the graph, or, or the function, is equal to the amplitude times, let's say, sine, but it would also work with the cosine. The amplitude of the function times sine of 2 pi divided by the period of the function times x. Now it might not, this right here is a p. So it might not be completely obvious where this comes from. But what I want you to do is maybe after this video or maybe in future videos, we'll experiment when we see what happens when we change this coefficient of the x term. And I think it'll start to make sense to you why this equation holds. But let's just take this as kind of an act of faith right now that 2 pi divided by the period is the coefficient on x. So if we say that 2 pi divided by the period, 2 pi divided by the period is equal to the coefficient, which is 1 half. I know this is extremely messy, and this is separate from this. So 2 pi divided by the period is equal to 1 half. Or we could say 1 half the period is equal to 2 pi. Or the period is equal to 4 pi. So we know the amplitude is equal to 2, and the period is equal to 4 pi. And once again, how did we figure out that the period is equal to 4 pi? We use this formula. 2 pi divided by the period is the coefficient on the x term. So we set 2 pi divided by the period equal to 1 half, and then we solve that the period is 4 pi. So where do we start? Well, what, hap what is sine, what is f of 0? What is f of 0 here? Well, when x is equal to 0, this whole term is 0. So what's sine of 0? Sine of 0 is 0, if you remember. Or you, I guess you could use a calculator, but that's something you should uh, remember. Or you could relook at the unit circle to remind yourself. Sine of 0 is 0. And then 0 times 2 is 0. So f of 0 is 0. All right, we'll do it right there. And we know that it has a period of 4 pi. That means that the function is going to repeat after 4 pi. So if we go out, it should repeat back out here at 4 pi. And now we can just kind of draw the function. And, and this will take a little bit of practice, but actually I'm going to draw it, and then we can explore it a little bit more as well. So the function's going to look like this. Oh, boy, this is more difficult than I thought. And then it'll keep going in this direction as well. And notice the period here. You could draw it from. Uh, you could do it from. Well, you could do it from here to here. This this distance is four pi. That's how long it takes for the function to repeat or to go through one cycle. Or you could also, if you want, you could measure 
this this distance to the to this distance this would also be 4 pi and that's the period of the function and then of course the amplitude of the function which is this right here is 2 here's the amplitude and then the period of 4 pi we figured out from um, this equation another way we could have thought about it let's say let's say that let me erase some of the stuff let's say i didn't have this stuff right here let's say i didn't know I didn't know what the function was. Let me get rid of all of this stuff, right? And all I saw was this graph, and I asked, I would have, and I asked you to figure, go the other way, using this graph, try to figure out what the function is. Then we would, you would just see, oh, well, how how long does it take for the function to repeat? Well, it takes four pi radians for the function to repeat. So you would be able to just visually realize that the period of this function is four pi, and then you would say, well, what's the amplitude? The amplitude is easy. You would just See how high it goes up or down, and it goes up two, right? You don't, you don't. When you do the amplitude, you don't do the whole swing. You just do how much it swings in the positive or negative direction. So it's the amplitude is two. So the oh, I'm using the wrong color. The the period is four pi. Amplitude is two. And then your question would be, well, this is an oscillating. This is a periodic function. Is it a sine or is it a cosine function? Well, cosine function. If, if, assuming we're not doing any shifting, and in a future model, module I will shift along the x-axis, but assuming we're not doing any shifting, cosine of 0 is 1, right? And sine of 0 is 0. And what's this function at, at 0? Well, it's 0, right? So this is going to be a sine function. So we would use this formula here. f of x is equal to the amplitude times the sine of 2 pi divided by the period times x. So we would know that the function is f of x is equal to the amplitude times sine of 2 pi over the period 4 pi x. And of course, these cancel out, and then this cancels out, becomes, and this becomes 2 sine of 1 half x. I know this is. A little difficult to read. Uh, my apologies. And I'll ask you a question: What would this function look like? F of x equals two cosine of one half x. Well, it's going to look the same, at least, but we're going to start at a different point. Cosine. What's cosine of zero? When x is equal to zero, this whole term is equal to zero. Cosine of zero. We learned before is one, so f of zero is equal to two. Let me write that. F of zero is equal to two. So f of zero. Let me do this in a different color. Let me draw the cosine function in a different color. We would start here. F of zero is equal to, but everything else is the same. The amplitude is the same, and uh, the period is the same. So now it's going to look like this. I hope I don't mess this up. This is difficult. So now the function is going to look like this. And you're going to go down here, and you're going to rise up again here. And on this side, you're going to do the same thing and keep going. So notice, the cosine and the sine functions look awfully similar. And the, and the way to differentiate them is what they do, well, what they do in general. But wh wh where they, the easiest way is uh, what happens when um, you, you input a 0 into the function? What happens at the y-axis, or when x is equal to 0, or when the, the angle that you input into it is equal to 0? Unless we're doing shifting, and, and don't worry about shifting for now. I'll do that in the future modules. Sine of 0 is 0, while cos cosine of 0 would be 1. And since we're multiplying it times this factor right here, times this number right here, it, the 1 becomes a 2. And so this is the graph of cosine of x. This is the graph of sine of x. And this is a little bit of a preview for shifting. Notice that the pink graph, or cosine of x, is very similar to the green graph, and it's just shifted. It's just shifted this way by, well, in this case, it's shifted by pi, right? And this actually has something to do with the period or the coefficient. In general, cosine of x is actually sine of x shifted to the left by, by uh, pi over 2. But I don't want to confuse you too much. That's all the time I have for this video. I will now do another video with a couple of more examples like this.